Faster than a speeding bullet, stronger than a moving train. Able to move tall mountains at the mention of Jesus' name. The promise of the Father, Jesus said he would send. The original superpower makes dead men live again. Whenever you're in trouble, anywhere from coast to coast, lift those hands to heaven. Calling, Satan wants to take it down. It ain't over till it's over when the Holy Ghost comes to town. It's no time for surrender, no time to retreat. From Genesis to Revelation, the Holy Ghost, he's never been beat. Whenever you're in trouble, anywhere from coast to coast, lift your hands to heaven. This is a job for the Holy Ghost. All right, some of you out there that people want to go ahead and listen to it. Come on now. Stop the feet, get up and dance if you need. We're going to do this again, huh? All right, here we go. That's a little speeding bullet. Stronger than a moving train, able to move tall mountains at the mention of Jesus' name. Promise from the Father, Jesus said He would send the original superpower. He makes dead men live again. Whenever you're in trouble, anywhere from coast to coast, lift the hands to heaven, follow the Lord. Need no Batman, Spider-Man, Uncle Sam. Come on now. I don't need no Power Rangers. I just need the Holy Ghost. Whenever you're in trouble, anywhere from coast to coast, lift your hands to heaven. All of the Lord of hosts. He ain't never lost that single battle. He's the one I need the most. This is a job for the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him a praise in the house. Come on now. Praise you know, I'd like to say that he's never lost his voice. I'd like to say that he's never lost a voice. Come on now. I'm just using this as an object lesson. How many of us have failed to praise his name? How many of us have failed to proclaim the name of Jesus, to share the gospel, listen, of God the Father through Jesus the Son, who now is in us? How many of us have failed to speak his glorious name? But we can speak about a lot of other things. You know, the Bible tells us that every idle word will be judged. And if, and, and listen, and if the world can, it will stop you from speaking the words of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And just so you realize this, the flesh is very quick to comply. Mm -hmm. The flesh is very quick to give in and give up. But Jesus, Jesus. say that name with me. But Jesus. Jesus, he's a name above every other name. Mm -hmm. Listen, he has all power, he has authority. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Come on, somebody. I'm already starting preaching here. Amen. 
And now get this. According to what we learn, he dwells within us. The power of God and Christ in us. Amen. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be glory and honor and power forever and ever. To him who sits on the throne, to him who sits on the throne, and he told his disciples and he tells us, I'm now giving you power. Let's not take it lightly. Let's not take it for granted. Somebody say, well, we're going to worship the Lord then. Amen? Amen. Let me bring the, get this thing going here. Would you all stand for the responsive reading of God's word this morning? Amen? Restore us, O God of hosts. Show, show the light of your confidence and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts. How long will we be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You, you have fed them with the of tears, of tears, of tears, of tears, tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And, and our, our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show, Show us the light of, of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Say that again. We show us the light of your countenance and we, we shall, shall be saved. Now let's say it as if we want God to show up. God, show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Reveal yourself to us, O oh God. Revive us, O oh God. We ask this in Jesus' name. We praise thee, O oh God, for the Son of thy love. For Jesus who died and is now gone above. Here's your part. Hallelujah. 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 Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb. something on the stove and just let it simmer for a little while longer. I'm going to let that fire simmer just a little while longer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a seat. You don't have to show your hand, but somebody's singing harmony up in here. Hallelujah. I love when that happens because it sounds good. Amen. I want us to preach a little while this morning, but before we preach, I want to do some have some reading done from the, the, the book which we call the Bible, the scriptures. Uh, I want to hear from uh, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Uh, Sister Margaret's going to read Acts chapter 1. Verses 1 through 11. With feeling, sister. The former account I made, O the apostles, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles, 
whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering of many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with Oh, them. wait. Say that again. That, that verse. And being what? Verse 4. To him he also presented himself, alive after his suffering, by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For a dry, truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know time or season which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and on all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they had watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Mm -hmm. And while they looked steadfastly towards the heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in the like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is coming. Jesus Again. Is coming. Again. 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 And now turn to, to the book of Luke in chapter 24 as we hear the reading of Luke 24, verses 46 through 53. Luke 24, 46 through 53. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. How often were they in that temple? Continually. Continually. How many of you glad to be in the church of God today? Amen. In the yeah. house of God, the house of prayer, the yeah. house of bread, the house of worship. Amen. Amen. Now I know it, it, when the argument has been made, well, the, 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 the building is not the church. I understand that. It's the house for us to gather in. It's a place of gathering. Turn your name and say, I'm so glad to be here today. I'm so glad to be here today. And I'm so glad that through the medium of the internet and other, th and other means that we have out there that there'll be some who'll get to hear the word of God today as we share it. Now, I want to bring this thought because as I've been teaching and preaching this series recently on reimagining greatness. Reimagine greatness. Remember, perhaps you uh, might, the first series of this was reimagine greatness, the love of God. And the love of God is reflected in our love for Him and our love for others and ourselves. Can you reimagine? Can you reimagine the greatness? And, and, and actually, when it comes to that, then it means reimagine the greatness of God and the greatness in us. And we went on through, and there were a couple of more weeks that came. And last week, we had the Mother's Day series, Reimagine Greatness. The, the greatness of a mother's love. Notice one of the observations we made last week about the love of a mother. Notice that the, the mother of Jesus, her name was what? Mary. 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 Little Mary. She stayed with Jesus before his birth, after his birth, during his rearing, during his suffering, during his crucifixion. She never left her son. 
Now, if you read the scripture, you'll find the Bible said that after Jesus was crucified, many of his followers turned back to their old lives. But never did Mary. Why? Because Mary loved her son. Mary's son would be the re reflection of God's love for us. Amen. Watch this. Him who knew no sin became sin. Come on now. But while he hung there on the cross, the worst vision any mother could possibly ever see, her son being put to death on the cross, yet she still stayed near him to the end. Amen? And that brings us to imagining greatness once again. Reimagine greatness. The greatness of God, the greatness of God in Christ. Re and reimagine, you see, today's readings describe the ascension of the Lord Jesus into heavenly glory after promising to send the apostles uh, that Holy Spirit as a source of heavenly power. And he also commanded them to bear witness to him through their lives and through their preaching throughout the entire world. Not just on Sunday, not just on midday, not just when you feel like it, but to stay true to the cause and the call of Christ, amen? To, to be holy and perfect. And so he ascended, listen, but the ascended Jesus is still alive with us. And you know how I know he's alive? Because he promised he would never leave us. And for him to be here, he would have to be alive. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's alive. He's alive. I am with you, he says. I am with you always. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I'm with you always. Yes, even until when? Until the end of time. He is with us at all times, in all places, and he's released, listen, he is releasing to us new energy. He energizes us. He restores our youth. He gives us times of refreshing. Some of you know these verses. These little, I'll say sometimes they become a cliche, but they're more than a cliche. <coughs> these are promises of God. Not just cute little statements that we say. This was a promise. I'll always be with you, even to the end of time. He's releasing new energy, new power into the earth. And this power, this energy, this influence is the power and the influence and the presence, say presence, of the Holy Spirit. Oh, some of you love me. In the presence of Jehovah. Come on. <laughs> You know what the Bible says about being in his presence? In his presence is fullness of joy. And as it's at his right hand, say his right hand. Right hand. Pleasures forevermore. Who sits at the right hand of God? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. I'm getting happy in here. I hope some of you get happy too. But you know, there are some things that we read in the Bible. And, and, I, and I've got to say, uh, there are some things that I find hard to believe. Some things are just hard to believe. I mean, it's a little hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, that the scripture is more, more true than what I might have seen even with my own eyes. Uh, we know that it's true, but it's sometimes a little hard to believe. Hard for our minds to process. Sometimes it's hard to believe that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Some Christians have a horrible time believing that Jesus meant what he said when he says, Your sins are forgiven. Some things are hard to believe. Can you get it? Can I get an amen? amen. Today I want to talk a, a little bit about 